So yes, it's going to be a challenge. So hopefully uh, ambitious in a way that is um, good for the district. The Salt Lake City School District has a little more than a dozen applications for its open superintendent job. Thanks for being with us. For 2 News at 5, I'm Heidi Hatch. I'm Mark Cabell. The district looking for a new leader after a tumultuous year and hopes to seat somebody by July. Crisis in the Classroom reporter Chris Jones has been following the story for the last 12 months now and tells us it could be a challenge to find the right superintendent. Well, Mark, I'm outside the Salt Lake City uh, School District's temporary offices. This is where they'll make that big decision about the next superintendent. That will be four superintendents in four years. The big question is for people who are applying for the job, how are they going to find somebody who's qualified? How are they going to find somebody who wants the job, given the past? Do you think it'll be a challenge to find a really good quality superintendent for the school district? So yes, it's going to be a challenge. Amanda Longwell has three kids and has watched a very difficult year unfold for SLCSD. She wonders who might actually want that superintendent's job. It's going to take a very ambitious soul <laughs> that's not scared of a project. Dr. Timothy Gatson left the superintendency after one very challenging year. Also. This 60-page legislative audit dinged the district with accusations of board infighting and poor financial management. Crisis in the classroom has learned only 16 people have applied to be Salt Lake City's next boss. How many people that are good superintendents didn't dare apply? Former Salt Lake City board member Michael Clara says word travels fast in education, and he says that report and the superintendent saga may water down the pool of interested applicants. I think that the, they've reduced the quality of people that would otherwise want to work in this district. I reached out to the Salt Lake City School District to ask them if they feel like these controversies could limit the number of qualified candidates. In an email, they told me that they feel like this question has been asked and answered, and they say, quote, we're wondering why this is being stirred up again. It's not the only factor, but it probably is one of them. Rusty Cannon with the Utah Taxpayers Association says four superintendents in four years, that's led in part to the issues we see in the district. If your leadership is flipping a lot or there's no general direction, you're just going to be like a boat without a rudder. The primary prerequisite should be, are they qualified? For Longwell, she's simply ready for stability and action. We need somebody with the skills and the capabilities to lead us successfully. Otherwise, we're going to continue on the cycle. So the process is moving quickly. Uh, by May, they're hoping to have had a superintendent appointed. By July, they're hoping that's, that superintendent will begin work. For Crisis in the Classroom, I'm Chris Jones, KTV2 News. This is a story our crisis in the classroom team has been keeping a close eye on for months now, including in January. Leaders put out a survey for those who live in the district to give their input. If you'd like to see all of our previous reporting and how we got to this point, you can check in on the crisis in the classroom tab. It's on KUTV.com. Just click on the 2 News mobile app.